In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a restricted net asset detail report. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our not-for-profit company or organization dashboard. Let's first go on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. We've been printing out the financial statements or formatting the financial statements within QuickBooks. We took a look at the uh, statement of financial position. These were in prior presentations. <laughs> we took a look at the statement of activities. And then we considered the detail for the statement of activities, breaking out the expenses by function, and then having another report that's going to be breaking out by function and by nature. Also note that if, if we consider the uh, statement of financial position, we see the balance sheet where we stand at a particular point in time. We see the net assets reflecting assets minus liability or basically what the company has or organization has. And that's what people are going to want to try to lay claim to. They're going to want to try to take that money and spend it, you know, whoever way they want to spend it on. And so we need to be breaking that out then between restricted net assets and not restricted net assets saying, hey, these this is the ones that are already basically applied to some way somewhere. And you have to be more you have to be more stringent in terms of how you're going to spend that money in accordance with. Uh, what what they're restricted for and then here's the unrestricted now the ones with restricted then uh, you may have questions of course the question could come up with is uh, well what types of restrictions are there what are the restrictions so we want to know what type of restrictions there are um, on them so for that we're going to be using the, basically our jobs report and this is the restrictions that happened for the life of the of the organization for the net assets you know what's the detail of these restricted items what are the restricted items here and then we have on the statement of activities, this is what happened during the time period. You'll recall that we have the items uh, with restrictions and without restrictions. So for this time period, this year or month, the question on the restricted items then, the ones that, that have restrictions, what activity happened during the current time period with regards uh, to the restrictions? In other words, we see income coming in here that's restricted and then the release from restriction but what, what are the specific categories that those took place in? So we can give the detail on, on those items. And that's the reports we're considering at this point to give us more detail that we're, we're anticipating those questions and then saying, okay, let's see if we can pick up those reports. So to do that, we're gonna go back to our reports and we've tracked this information in two different ways. You can choose basically one of the two or you can, you can track them both ways as we did here if you so choose. We're going to be opening up the profit and loss and let's open up two of them to reflect the two different ways we have seen this so i'm going to open up a pnl profit and loss we're going to scroll up top we're going to change the dates from january to 013120 so the first through the 31st let's run that report then i'm going to duplicate this tab hovering over the tab up top right clicking on it duplicating it back to the tab to the left we're going to open up another profit and loss where it's already open because <laughs> It's the same report. So that's great. We got profit and loss on, on both sides. Let's go back to the PL on the right and work with this one first. I'm going to close up the hamburger, hold down control, scroll up just a bit. So we're at that one, two, five. That's where I like to be. Here's going to be our profit and loss. Now we want to see this. One way we can break this out is using the classes as we did before. So if I go back up top and if we hit the drop down, we could say we want to look at it by classes, run that report. And now what we have are, are the classes and what we're considering or thinking about here are the restricted items here. So now we're considering the restricted items, which are which are the items that that have you know some restriction on them. And these are the categories of restrictions, which we had the government education, the long term project and the time restrictions. And now we can see the activity that has happened for that restriction over this time period, which happens to be one month. So note, we could run this report for, for two different periods here. In other words, if we, if we had more than one month worth of data, then in order to tie into the balance sheet as of a point in time, if I want to tie in back into the statement of position here for the restricted items uh, with donor restrictions, I'd have to run the PL for the life of, of basically the organization to show the activity that will then tie into the to this number. In this case, we only have one month of activity. So therefore, we're good on just basically the one month of activity. But notice you could end up running two different reports, one to tie into this number, 
the 234-656, and then two, another one to tie into the, the statement of activities. So be aware of that. We're just going to, we've only got one month of data, so we'll, we'll be working with this. So you'll notice that the total here adds up to the 234-656. If I go back on over here, that adds up to the amount on the statement of net position, 234-656, and also on the income statement. Again, those two numbers don't always match. They match because we only have one month of data. If, if there's more than one month of data, this would match for that per particular time frame. And this one would have to be run for the life of, of the organization to get the proper number to tie into the balance sheet. Okay, so that means that we don't really need the expenses down below because remember the expenses are... Um, are, are items that uh, they're, they're not going to be in the restricted items because when something becomes unrestricted, what happens? We take it out using these two accounts up top. The net assets released, so that's going to be taking it out here and then moving it over to the unrestricted, and therefore all the expenses are going to be part of the unrestricted items. So we don't really need the activity down below, and if I was to group this, this information up top, uh, I, I only need the restricted information. So I'm going to go back up top. We could filter this, in other words, customizing this. We're going to go down to the filters and say, I'm going to customize this, and I'm going to use the class filters. And then within the class filters, I'm going to select the drop down, and we want to pick the uh, restricted information. So everything that's restricted now, we don't need the unrestricted stuff. So I'm going to then run that report. So we've got only the restricted information. So there we have it. And that's in essence what we need. Then we can change the name of the report from a profit and loss to, let's edit the name. I could edit it here or I can edit back up top in the customize. I tend to go to the customize up here and then go down to the header and footer. And we could call this something like, instead of the P and L, we'll call it restricted restricted net assets uh, detail report now you might make one again two reports one for the restricted uh, increase in net assets like the income statement report increase in net income and one for the net assets meaning the balance sheet uh, but we only need one here because we only have that one month of data so there we have that then you could save this report if you so choose we could customize this i'm sorry we could save it as a customized and then I'm going to say this is number one I'm going to put a one next to it because we're going to make two of these and show you how I can make it two ways and then you could save it there and then save that and then that would be in your custom reports and you can and you can generate this uh, periodically when you make your financial statement uh, information breaking out this this information by category now now, we, we did this with the classes, but another way you may have worked this is you may have said, hey, I only want to see one class that's going to be uh, restricted. And then I want to use kind of like the jobs feature to break out the detail of those restrictions. So if you if you run that, we're going to we would see only this number on the classes and then say, now I'm going to use the job feature to, to break out the rest. So then I can I can run a similar report going to the second P&L and closing up the hamburger here let's run this one not by class but by uh, customer so i'm going to run this by customer and then run that report so same it's a p l report but it's run by customer now and now i want to i want to just show the customers that have to do with our jobs basically the sub customers so then i'm going to go back up top and say customize and we want to filter this thing we want to filter it by customer and then I'm going to choose the customers we want. So I want everything that's that's a, got a subcategory. So like the government and we should only need to choose the first one of each column, but I'll choose all of them. The long term restricted and the time restriction and is that it? And then let's do that. I have a test. I don't think I need it. But in any case, we're going to say run that report. And so there we have it. So, so now we got the government grants, the government, the, the total government uh, grants. And these are going to be the categories. And so scrolling all the way to the right, we have all these. And they should add up to the total of the 234,656. If we go to the profit and loss here, 
and go to all the way to the right for let's pull this all the way to the right 234 656 and then we have the 234 656 and then if we went to again our our reports over here 234 656 here and uh and we see it on the statement of net position down here so those are the two formats you can you can use now again the name of this report no, I accidentally already changed the name, but I, and I changed the name of the company. But in any case, the restricted net asset detailed report too, you could save it in a similar format and you can, and you could save it as a custom report up top. So those are the two ways that you can, you can track this information. So let's go back to the, to the first one. Let's go to, to this tab and let's export this report. We'll do our, our standard exporting. Now note, we're really looking at the income statement information up top. The expense stuff doesn't really help. It doesn't hurt right right down there because there's nothing in it. But but we could clean it up at once if we send it to Excel and we wanted to clean it up uh, there. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say we could print it same kind of fashion. We could uh, print it to a PDF file and uh, send it out in this format. So we could say let's print that. And we're going to print it using the Qt PDF printer in this case. So again, we're going to print it as a PDF file. So I'm going to go ahead and print going to ask us where do we want to put it and I'm going to say that we're going to put it in our folder there again and we have all the other stuff same folder on same place the usual we're going to tell it and we're going to call it this is going to be the res restricted net asset detail report so we'll save it there then we'll export it so let's export it to excel doing our standard process and then within excel we can do formatting for it and we can add it to our other reports so that we can print it all all the reports at one point in time and or make one pdf file with all the reports within it so here it is i'm going to do the same process i'm going to copy the entire sheet by going to the triangle up top copying the entire sheet right click on that selected area copy it then I'm going to go open the other Excel sheet that we had with our reports on it, where we have the balance sheet statement of activities and uh, the allocation of the expenses. I'm going to paste it up top. I'm going to put it in A1, must be in A1, right click, and we will paste it here. So there we have it. I'm going to rename the sheet now, double clicking on the sheet name and call it uh, Restricted Net Asset Detail, something like that. And so then I usually go to the second tab over here to see what it looks like. It's not quite on one page. So then I'm going to go to the first item. These aren't tabs, actually. They're called views. So this is the two views. So I need to adjust it a little bit to, to fit it on a page here. So once again, I typically will go back up top, home tab, alignment, and unmerge. And then home tab, alignment, unmerge. Home tab, alignment, and unmerge. And then I typically would want to get rid of the expenses. So I don't need these expenses down below. I don't need the gross profit. Those aren't helping me much. So I'm going to right click on those and uh, delete those items. This restricted column here, not helping me much either. So I can go into the restricted column and uh, delete that. It's probably going to mess up my totals, but I, I see what the totals are, where they come from. So I'm going to say, that's okay, delete that. And then I'm just going to sum this back up again, equals the sum of these. And then I'll autofill that down. So I'll take my cursor and autofill that down here. And then this total column is kind of repetitive, so I don't need that. I'm going to put my cursor on F, right click, and uh, delete that. And so there we have that. And then this should be summed up this way equals the sum. I'm going to sum it up like so. And there we have it. So then I'll, I'll make this a little bit larger so we could see it. Actually, I hope you, you could see this. <laughs> and then I could highlight these and change the format of them to kind of match what we've been doing before. Right click format these. I know I'm doing this quickly, but uh, it's not an Excel course. I just want to so then I'm going to go into the currency. I'm going to make it negative numbers. I'll remove the decimals and then say, OK. And so there we have that. And then again, um, if we were to take a look at the total restricted items here and I was to consider, say, the balance sheet, then people are going to say, 
uh, you know, what are these restricted items? I want to spend that money. And we're like, well, here's what the restrictions are according, you know, the government grants, the long term and the time, you know, restrictions. And you can get into the detail, you know, of the restrictions. And then if you looked at the, the statement of activities, then again, you got the restricted items here. This is what, what took place in the restricted items in the current time period, which are the same because, again, we only have one month of data. And then again, you see the, the restricted items here uh, tying out as well. So just note that, like I say, if you had multiple uh, months, then this would be for the month of January. You'd have to run another report that would tie into the balance sheet that would just you just run the thing for the life of the of the organization and it should uh, it should all work okay so that's going to be it so now if we were to print this out we could print this out from one excel file and collate it all together which would be great if we had to print it out for a meeting or we can print it and post it to one pdf file so i can then say let's say print and then we want to the the trick here of course is that we want to print the entire workbook now the entire workbook including the uh, four pages, the statement of financial position, the statement of activities, the expense allocation, and the restricted net asset detail report. We're going to print it to a cute PDF printer, which will then put it all on one PDF, print, PDF file that we can then send out, which is one PDF file. Again, that's really kind of nice. It's kind of impressive sometimes, you know, to, to do that. So rather than having a, a whole lot of files attached. So I'm going to say, okay, we're going to minimize this. Uh, did it save it? Let's say save. Financial already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes. And document could not be saved. Access denied. The file may be read only. Huh. Interesting. So let's try it again. I'm going to say file. Uh, let's say let's make it a number two and see if it's because I have the other one open possibly and say save. And let's now close this back out. Looks like that worked. And I do you want to save your changes? I'm going to say save and then minimize this, minimize this. And then I'm going to, the way we can give this to someone, then I'm going to make another folder and I'm going to call it uh, financial statements. And we could put this all into one folder, right? We could say, I'm just going to put the items, we could put the expense allocation in there. We got the, uh, I'm going to put the, uh, restricted net assets in there. We could put the statement of activities in there and we could put the statement of financial position. There's the reports that we had and we could attach these one by one to an email, for example, or we could right click on that file. We can send it uh, to a zipped file and that allows us to make an attachment of the zipped file, which is a little bit nicer. We can use the Excel file to print out and collate all at the same time uh, rather than printing them one at a time. Or we can send the financial statement file here in a PDF format and we can attach that to an email. And then I did have it open. That was the problem. And then it has the financial statement, statement of position and uh, statement of activities and the uh, expense allocation and then the restricted net asset detail report. So again, you can do a lot more formatting. I know I did this really quickly. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on, you know, formatting in Excel and whatnot, but just to give you some ideas on how you could, you could use these reports and how you might want to distribute them or display them both from directly QuickBooks uh, for what you need as possible, as well as with the use of, of Excel and, and printers and the cute PDF file, which could make it a little bit easier for users to work with as well. So that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.